I see very exciting sessions uh, since morning and thank you so much for such a nice response. The questions, the queries that are coming up, the people who have joined speaks a lot about the interest in the subject that we have today. Uh, simulation and testing is certainly becoming very important uh, for the automotive industry as we are trying to market product in a shorter time because uh, uh, the dynamism that has come around in the automotive mark, uh, space. I'm joined by uh, Mr. Martin Murray, who is CTO of Mahindra Electric. He is here to discuss how simulation testing and validation or the virtual reality in terms of testing and va validation is going to work. We are also connecting through a virtual summit. This is the first uh, uh, virtual simulation uh, summit that we are doing in India. Uh, so uh, it speaks uh, volumes about the virtual reality. So we have traveled from virtual reality to reality is virtual nowadays. Uh, welcome to reality is virtual, Martin. I just want to get a perspective on how do you see simulation and testing playing role in electric vehicle, in ICE engine or traditional vehicle. We have been seeing, uh, you know, a lot of progress in this direction. A lot of uh, manufacturers, component makers are using this as a tool to uh, arrive at a production level at a much faster way uh, than doing it in actual life conditions. How do you see this in electric vehicle ecosystem, be it vehicle manufacturing, design and development, or battery, or the battery management system? And those are good questions, and it's a fantastic uh, topic. Uh, great to bring it up here and talk about it a little bit. You mentioned kind of the industry of internal combustion and the modeling tools and the simulation uh, was really designed, you know, around the thermodynamics, gas flows, tribology, uh, and some of these characteristics that are unique uh, and critical to internal combustion. And now that we focus on electrified propulsion, we have a new set of challenges and a new set of opportunities for both the simulation tools and the types of testing we do and the relationship between those. So the dominant tools in the electric propulsion space are focused around um, electrical performance, thermal management. Uh, we have a lot of structure. And we also look at uh, EMI, EMC, uh, as well as radiated noise. So these are areas that have some background in the industry, but in reality, there's a lot of opportunity to improve those tools so that we can accelerate the implementation of technology like you mentioned. If we look at the electric vehicle, it's a quite new thing for Indian market. We are still to penetrate when it comes to electrified vehicles. We have very less volume here largely three-wheeler, which is a very low-cost product in India, especially also two-wheeler or e -rixa. These are the most popular electric vehicles that we have right now. Do you think use of simulation and testing can be implemented in current scenario? Because looking at the cost implications, how uh, important is cost here for electric vehicles? And do you think looking at the cost competitiveness or manufacturers can have optimal use of simulation and testing tools? Well, let's talk about what simulation and testing can do in the industry. And I'll mention a little bit of how we've used these tools specifically on the products that you mentioned that are popular and indigenous here in India. So we, we find that the simulation tools really enable three different areas of improvement. The first is it lets, lets us take bigger steps in terms of how we're gonna move forward with technology and how we're gonna move forward with localization because it allows us to consider bigger ideas and broader use of technology because we're able to look at it early in a virtual environment. The second thing it does, uh, and you mentioned this, is it allows us to accelerate our processes because we don't wait to build first parts to see if they work. We have good confidence from virtual work that our designs are sound, and that way we accelerate the development and the validation through that early confidence from the uh, digital twin. And then the final way is that we see a cost reduction in the development process because we can use fewer physical properties to get the same level of confidence. And we do that by 
building and testing physical parts, comparing the results to our models, verifying and validating that our models are accurate, and that way we can build confidence in both ways. So we look at two separate forms of confidence in the products, and that allows us to move faster, take bigger steps, and have a higher confidence with fewer physical properties before we take these to market. And we're doing this right now on these three-wheelers, uh, some of the e-rickshaw and the e-autos that we do today because we've been rapidly localizing core parts. And we've been using the simulation technologies, especially in the area of structural and structural and thermal analysis. It's been extremely effective. Uh, structural is common with ICE engine vehicles also, but thermal is something uh, more focused in electric vehicle when it comes to testing and validation. It becomes very important compared to ICE engine, right? Yeah, we, we have a lot of thermal limits and, and really thermal management and cost are highly related. So a lot of the cost in electric propulsion systems is in the thermal management area. And the better we understand the thermal behavior and the better we understand the application of new technologies, the quicker we can reduce the cost burden of the thermal side and give the customer better value with better performance. Can you give us some sense, a specific understanding of how efficiently uh, can one use uh, simulation and testing or val virtual validation process to arrive at perfect quality or closer to perfect quality when it comes to thermal efficiency or body structure that meets all the uh, norms that we have in India? Well, I can give a really good example. Um, we have now developed a couple of different kind of class-leading affordable thermal systems for batteries. In the past products, we've actually had some uh, patents in the thermal management using air cooling that was designed looking at airflow and looking at the consistency of thermal management throughout a battery pack using air cooling. And now we're in the process of, of the launching the most affordable electric four-wheeler in India using thermal management with liquid cooling. And we were able to do this based on experience, looking at these systems with some tools that we had some confidence. And we ended up matching the performance in the laboratory with the performance that we modeled very closely. So we think that we went quickly, very quickly, into a place where we're gonna have excellent thermal performance of the battery, which translates into life and into utility for the customer. So those are areas we've already been able to apply the technology very effectively, and we're gonna do it you know, more in the future with the confidence and with the experience we gained in this uh, application. Uh, before we go into talking about how will the simulation and testing beef up in electric vehicle space, can you give us a sense uh, of what kind of, advantage uh, do you get in terms of time, in terms of efficiency, in terms of quality while using these virtual testing? How different are these from real world testing that we used to do in relation to electric vehicles? Quality comes from confidence and confidence in, in the past has come from time. You know, we build, we test, we use the products for a period of time, we build confidence and then we have the ability to launch with quality. What we now have is a case where we have confidence before we even have parts. And then we use the parts to prove the model. And we find that that's a big part now of our development activities and our validation activities isn't just to prove the product, but it's to prove the model. And the reason that matters is because it can allow us to reduce the number of properties and the time it takes to build that confidence with physical parts. So that matching of the simulation tool with the actual physical data is already underway and it allows us to shrink our development times, delivering actually a better product with higher confidence at the production point. So we're really happy with how that's going. There are some areas that we think can continuously improve and we would like to continuously improve the areas that we already know work like thermal, structural, and some electrical, but we think we see opportunities to grow up in NBH and in uh, EMI EMC. Those areas, we think there can be improvements in tools. We're leading that effort right now, 
and we're going to grow in that way step by step. So what is the potential of uh, uh, this technology you, uh, you see going forward? How dominant it is going to be uh, in the product life cycle? I think there's no doubt that to be successful in the industry, you have to be skillful in this area. I also believe, and there's been some discussions in the industry that the day we can go, sometimes it's called art to part or art to plant, you know, take an idea, put it on the computer, push the simulation and validation button, whole thing is done, and then you just send the drawings to the factory and uh, engineering takes just a few months. Uh, that's probably not in the next few generations of products, but every single part of the product, whether it's a box that holds some mechanical or electrical parts, whether it's electrical systems that do conversion or do uh, transformation that do power device controls, we think all of those areas are going to benefit. So we do thermal analysis across our entire suite of products, uh, including motors and controllers and batteries, and all these systems. So everything can benefit. And we're pushing that envelope forward. And the whole industry is doing that. And we expect that people who are our partners and our tier one, tier two suppliers have that capability as well. So when we're getting parts from them, they've already done manufacturing analysis. So they have high confidence in producibility and quality. And then we can take those parts, put those parts into physical tests, verify our models. And it's not a dream. It's the kind of work that we do today. So component maker equally supporting on this and they're equipped with the simulation and testing tools. Uh, uh, that's how you are working jointly to deliver uh, products in shorter time in much better quality also. If we talk about simulation and testing or bringing a product design validation and testing uh, to the virtual world, how much of it we have really achieved in bringing to virtual world and how much it is left that we can in near future are going forward and we look forward to bring to the virtual world without impacting the quality. Well, I think the, you know, the day when we can go uh, from your mind to the factory and produce that car in a few weeks, uh, that's the goal. And none of us are going to um, not think about the ability to get to that point in the future. But we have to do some uh, incremental steps in development. I mentioned that mechanical and thermal are really strong points now in the industry. Uh, we think that there can be growth, a lot of growth in NVH and in uh, EMI, EMC, because today a lot of times we still have to kind of test the product to really understand how those particular characteristics uh, respond to the design. But I, I think also that we want to strive to have a multi-physics model of battery behavior, you know, at a cell level, at a molecular level. That's being worked on throughout the industry, both in the, you know, in the laboratories of universities, as well as in the leaders in battery production and development. But a multi-physics model that can rapidly predict the life cycle behavior of different battery technologies, that's going to be a breakthrough that's going to let the industry accelerate low cost, high performance energy storage, which is what our customers want. And then we're going to be the first ones to put that into, you know, customer hands. Before we end, I will ask two more questions. One, we have seen a lot of startups coming up in electric vehicle space. Uh, can you give us, uh, give an advice to them? How can they use simulation and testing uh, to reduce the cost of production or when they are developing a prototype? What would be your advice uh, to them? Because they are mostly, uh, they have cash crunch. They can't uh, spend very generously because uh, that, that's the biggest constraint. How can simulation and testing help them, you know, uh, in their journey to start or to bring out product? Well, that's a great question. Um, and I do want to say that for the benefits that we've seen in terms of larger steps with technology, acceleration of work, and reduction in properties, this is really the result of kind of building the ecosystem within our company and feeding back what we learn. So my advice to startup companies in this space, which, you know, I encourage everyone to embrace electrification. So, you know, bring it on. Everybody can jump in. But do spend the time and put the effort into correlating what you think you simulated 
into what you actually test. And it's that relationship between the physical world and the virtual world that has to be strong and it has to be developed with confidence. So if you overstep and you believe your simulation before you have a chance to really prove it in the real world, you may make some uh, errors. And my advice then is to make sure you correlate back to your virtual system with what you test and don't cut corners in that area. Otherwise you lose that growth in terms of learning the system and learning how to build your next model with even more fidelity and more capability. Can you share some uh, you know, case study or some key challenges that you face in terms of testing validation uh, through virtual uh, world, like uh, which is called simulation and uh, testing through simulation or any other virtual tool? What are the key challenges that you feel or you have faced that you want to overcome? Yeah, I think the key is knowing where the tools are most useful. And I had mentioned two areas that I think the industry and in our own company, we can improve. Uh, one is NVH. Uh, we would love to be able to model a system and have great confidence in the performance from noise and vibration and harshness. You know, what is the customer experience? Because people expect electric drive to be silent. And they should expect that because that's what we want to deliver in the long run. But we find that we can still improve in that area. And then the second area is... So do you uh, think a simulation is not able to provide you 100% accuracy in testing NVH? Yeah, I, I think that wow. our tools... Well, because the complexity of the system, we have magnetics, we have structure, and we have things like gear trains. And so we really need a multi-physics approach that takes into account all these systems. And I'll make one example. is the electric motor. We have you know, so many poles. So we have sort of a torque ripple uh, variable that's part of the motor design. And that torque ripple characteristic actually radiates through the drivetrain and creates a acoustic system that we have to be able to anticipate and then design so the natural frequencies of that acoustic system don't uh, offend the customer. And these areas already are part of our growth of simulation, but I feel pertinent to your question that those are areas that we can improve for years to come so that we can have much higher confidence when we go to do the physical product and we can develop a suite of countermeasures that are part of the first design that bring us into the first development with a lot of high performance in terms of NVH. So that's an area where I think the industry and our team is going to continue to focus and grow. Thank you so much, Martin, for joining Ethioto Simulation and Testing Virtual Conclave. And thank you, everyone, for watching. If you have any question for Martin, please post them in the chat box. Martin is available to answer them individually. Thank you so much once again, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, let's join the next session.